So somebody called into David Pakman's show and uh, spoke about the history of his, you know, political ideological evolution, and this was great. We're taking calls at 617-830-4750. We're going to go next to our caller from the 516 area code. Who's calling today from 516? Hi, uh, David. This is me, James. Yeah, what's going on, James? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Long Island. Oh, great. What's um, going on? So in my time being involved with politics, I've kind of flip flopped from leftist to conservative. Wow. And now I think I finally found I kind of finally found my spot as a social Democrat, very much in line with your own views. Wow. So wait, um, let me let me find out about that. When you were left before sure. you were right, before you were a social Democrat, mm -hmm. how left were you? Yep. Um, I was very I was kind of apolitical, but my family was all very democratic. So I kind of just stuck with them. Um, I it, really the one issue for me that kind of stuck with me was um, gay rights because I have family members who are gay and mm. just to, to see one side be very much in favor with gay marriage. That's what kind of I was like, if that's the side that's going to make that's going to treat them like human beings, that's the side I want to be on. Right. Um, and then what then made you become once, conservative in that middle period? So after the 2016 election, I thought, oh, I have to like really see if I can figure out that I know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about things. And I went down the YouTube rabbit hole. I started listening to people like Ben Shapiro and Steven Crowder. Wow. And I thought that their arguments kind of clicked with me. Um, but over time, they kind of fell flat when I started to look at other viewpoints. And then I found your channel. I found uh, other liberal outlets. And again, I found my spot as a social Democrat, I think. Wow. So what you're saying um, is that you in your apolitical sort of left leaning household, you were sort of left leaning by default. You then got sucked yeah, into a right wing much. YouTube echo chamber, including Ben Shapiro and Steven Crowder, which pulled you to the right. Mm -hmm. But then at some point mm -hmm. after that, channels like mine and others were able to deprogram you from the right wing indoctrination. Yes, to the point where yesterday I actually became a member of the David Packman show. Wow. So, wow. Um, this is an yeah. incredibly completely not staged and planned phone call. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm completely sincere. You know, again, I, I tell you guys this all the time, but this this is my favorite part of doing this. My favorite part is hearing the deconversion stories, you know, um, Lilith has told me, you know, I, I love this day. She told me that uh, after listening to the show for a while, I played a major role in helping to deconvert her mom from being, you know, a Republican pretty much her entire life. And that's it. That's what this is all about, man. This is all about, you know, trying to make a difference and trying to you know, get people to the point where th they have a, an ideological framework and a philosophical framework and policy beliefs that just want to help people and just want to make the world, a, you know, a slightly better place and just want things to make sense and function in a reasonable way, you know? And I like to think that that's what we're pushing for here and what we're arguing for here. But I think it's really important to kind of take people away from these odious charlatans who really have just horrendously incorrect and immoral beliefs. I'm talking, of course, about the likes of Ben Shapiro and Steven Crowder and many others. You know, the further right you go and the more white nationalisty you go, the worse they get. Stefan Mali. <laughs> Stefan Mali. <laughs> Among many others. So, um, it really frustrates me, though, that this, this explanation and this dynamic that David's talking about here we, and when I say we, I mean the broader left-wing uh, community on YouTube and on Twitch and elsewhere. You know, we never get credit for it. it honestly, the only times you hear about it is when, like, David will bring it up or I'll bring it up or, or Jimmy Dore will bring it up or, you know, any of the left tubers, which, by the way, I didn't know this until recently, apparently were called bread tubers. Okay. Um, we're the only ones who you ever hear even mention it. And it's crazy that 
all you need to do is sneeze and you get profiles in mainstream media if you're a right winger. I mean, think about all those profiles about Richard Spencer with pictures of him in like a, a, a suit and tie on the cover like, Yes, I'm very serious because I'm massively bigoted and I want a white ethno state. Yes. Like, that dude got countless profiles in mainstream media. And I'm not kidding about that. You go and check. You'll see. You'll see. And you'll see stories like, uh, you know, making of a YouTube radical with Caleb Kane, who explained how he got sucked uh, down that rabbit hole. And in the article, they admit, oh, the here's how he got out of it. By listening to Destiny, uh, you know, a lefty Twitch streamer, basically debate race and IQ with these charlatans on the right, and Destiny poked a zillion holes in their arguments, and then Caleb Kane was like, hmm, maybe I'm wrong, and I shouldn't agree with these goofballs on the right who are pushing really odious ideas. But the focus of the article is, oh my god, isn't YouTube terrible? Isn't, uh, you know, uh, the internet terrible? Because people get radicalized. And it's like, but the solution was just explained that it was the same thing was the solution. For all the odious actors on the right, there were good actors on the left who got a lot of people out of this. Now, I'm not saying we're a cure-all and we fix everything, but it's definitely a dynamic in the same way that it's a dynamic that there are people who go down that rabbit hole and end up believing in insane far-right politics, uh, you know, white nationalist politics. There's also the gateway in and the gateway out. And that includes people like Destiny, that includes people like ContraPoints, that includes all the left-wing YouTubers that you're all familiar with and you all know. Now, I get it. There 100% is infighting in the left-wing uh, YouTube community. And But listen, that's par for the course. Just like there's... You know, you know, right-wingers arguing with right-wingers sometimes, there's also left-wingers arguing with left-wingers, and we're never gonna see eye-to-eye -eye on absolutely everything because we're not monolithic. We're just not, but that's okay. That's okay because this isn't about groupthink. This is about telling you what we really believe and covering important news stories and politics stories, and, you know, you guys make up your own minds after you see everything that's presented to you, but the answer to bad speech, I know it's a cliche at this point, but it's kind of true, was more speech, and was good speech, and it was Destiny whooping their asses, and, um, here we are. Now, David put my name in the title of that video, he said, um, caller, you know, whatever, deconverted, or whatever term he used, uh, by David Pakman and Kyle Kalinske, that was actually very nice of David to put that in the title, but the dude didn't mention my name. <laughs> he said, I saw your show and other, um, lefty shows and that helped change my mind he never mentioned my name so unless the call was longer or something and we didn't see some of it and he did mention my name at another part which i don't i doubt that so it's possible it was me it's possible it was any of you know a dozen other lefty youtubers but either way um they landed in a place where we're at and this is an important dynamic, and it keeps happening, and all we could ask for is more of this happens. And by the way, I don't care how the hell they get out of these beliefs, as long as they get out of them. I don't care which lefty YouTuber or Twitch streamer they like. I don't care um, the details of that or the specifics of that or the order of that, as long as people get out of those heinous and ugly beliefs and they start believing things that make sense. And again totally reasonable and rational and fine to disagree with me on a number of issues. That's totally fine. But as long as you see that it, this isn't nothing but a gross hellscape, you know, because th that's the perception now of YouTube. Oh my God, it's a gross hellscape that's converting everybody to being a far right winger. And oh my God, censor more and deplatform more and crack down. And this is the mantra now in mainstream media, certainly, and in establishment circles of what needs to happen with YouTube, in reality, maybe the answer is you take some of the lefty YouTubers and you do give them the profiles. You do talk to them and say, hey, how did you do it, David? Hey, man, how did you deconvert this guy from, uh, you know, listening to Ben Shapiro and Steven Crowder? What is it about your, pr your presentation that works? Because here's the deal, guys. CNN ain't doing it. MSNBC ain't doing it. They show up to a gunfight with a super soaker. 
Seriously, nobody is convinced by them. Nobody's watching Don Lemon or Anderson Cooper and going, Nailed it! You know? Nobody's watching Lawrence O'Donnell. I wonder what Lawrence thinks! Tee hee hee! No, it's a, we have a younger generation now that's getting politically involved. And they're not listening to the dude with the fucking teleprompter in the suit and tie who has perfect posture and he's like... Let me tell you about what's happening today. There was a problem over the, uh, over the Black Sea. and No, nobody... They're not doing that. Where they go is here. So... And, and that's part of the problem is I think they know that they're totally helpless to fight back against this problem of right-wing radicalization online. And when I say they, I mean mainstream media, mainstream publications, mainstream TV shows, and uh, news shows, nominally news shows. So, they don't know what to do other than write these articles where they basically are implying we need to censor and deplatform. We have the solution. We have the answer. But you guys don't even know we exist. <laughs> or don't, or, or know we exist but don't care to treat us in the same way you treat the right-wingers. Somehow right-wing activism is inherently sexy and they get all these profiles. Left-wingers, ugh. You guys are like calling for people to get healthcare and have like free college? Ugh, gross. You guys, like, want legalized marijuana? Ugh. All these ideas that make sense. That's too banal. <laughs> That's too banal. That makes too much sense. And it's not sexy enough. Why don't you say how you're in favor of some sort of a genocide? And then maybe we'll give you, a, you know, a, a profile. But that's the thing, is the answer is here. We have the answer. And um, it's ignored. They ain't gonna get out of it by reading the Washington Post. They're not gonna get out of it by watching MSNBC. It's just not going to happen. So we basically fight fire with fire and we're ignored in the process. So props to this guy who called into David Pakman's show. And, um, you know, do do this, guys. If, if you're one of these people who's been influenced, you know, let them know. Let them know. Whichever um, host may have gotten you out of that rabbit hole, out of the descent, whoever it might be. Reach out to them, let them know, because I'm sure that they love hearing it in the same way that I love hearing it. It's one of the most rewarding parts of what we do.